A flashlight is a very simple circuit. It consists of a power supply in the form of one or more batteries and a light bulb filament, which acts as an electrical resistor. When we run current through the filament, it gets white hot, producing light. A parabolic reflector in the end of the flashlight directs this light in a single direction. The filament is just a very thin, narrow wire. Longer, thinner wires have more electrical resistance. Filaments made of different materials also have different resistivity. When we adjust the resistance slider, we see the microscopic view change. What's happening here? The green dots represent conduction band electrons, electrons that are free to flow through the metal that constitutes the filament. It is a common misconception to think of metal conductors as containing a flow of electrons, just as a water hose contains a flow of water. The electrons themselves are the conductor. After all, what is metal but its constituent electrons and protons? The electrons bounce around because the filament is at room temperature. In fact, they'd be moving much more quickly than this, but that is hard to visualize. If we showed them at realistic speeds, they would just be a blur. The red dots represent the atomic cores of the metal. These consist of a nucleus and many electrons orbiting the nucleus. They are missing just one or two electrons. These are the green conduction band electrons that are free to range from one atom to the next. Let's turn on the switch. When the electrons hit the atoms, they begin vibrating. The vibrational motion of the atoms is how we are representing the heat generated by flowing electrons through the circuit. The vibrations of the atoms would again be too fast for us to see, so we are just showing a crude model of it here. The electrons transfer energy to the substance of the filament through collisions. Where do the electrons get this energy in the first place? This is where the batteries come in. Favorable chemical reactions cause one end of the battery to become positively charged compared to the other. The electrons are emitted from the negative end and flow along conducting wires to the positive end. Greater electrical potential, known as voltage, in the batteries will provide the electrons with greater potential energy. As they cascade down through the narrow filament, much like a waterfall splashing through rocks, they collide and give up this potential energy. Let's have a look at the graph at the top left. This is a plot of battery voltage on the vertical axis versus current in the circuit on the horizontal axis. The slope of such a graph equals the resistance. Let's alter the resistance slider and see that this is true. Higher resistance means a steeper slope. We interpret a higher slope by noticing that to generate a current, more voltage is needed for higher resistance. You'll notice this graph is linear, as Ohm's law would suggest. Ohm's law states that the electrical potential is the product of current and resistance. The graph at the top right is the power emitted by the light bulb filament as a function of current. This is a parabolic or quadratic graph, meaning that the power dissipated depends on the square of the current. This is because higher current means not only more electrons, but also more energy per electron for a given electrical resistance. You'll notice a slider that allows us to move the physics from ideal, meaning obeying Ohm's law, to realistic, which means we allow for non-ohmic behavior. In a real light bulb filament, the resistance would increase with temperature. So, as the bulb gets hot, the slope of the voltage versus current graph would become steeper and steeper. The bulb is getting hotter at high current, so the graph shows a bend upward. One last thought about the microscopic view. This is a very human model we are using to get at the basic underlying phenomenon. In fact, the best models physicists have made of the flow of electrons through a circuit wouldn't look anything like this at all. The quantum nature of electrons, the fact that they are not point particles, as shown here, would need to be invoked. So take this, like all introductory physics models, with a grain of salt. Thanks for watching.